Hi everyone, Kurt Zepp here. So I wanted to do a quick video comparing dark frames collected with my new ASI 2600 MC and compare that with my ASI 294 MC as well as my ASI 1600. I'm still going to show you that, but I want to. I, I was doing some research and it got and it ballooned out to a little bit more or expanded out to a little bit more. So what precipitated this little experiment was I had a conversation with somebody recently and he was mentioning how he just got a ASI 294MC Pro as well and he was like all excited because since he's going to cool it, he doesn't have to take any darks anymore. And I was like, hmm, I didn't know about that. So I'm going to show you my results and why you would need to take uh, dark frames as well. Also, I was doing some, while I was preparing for this, I was doing some more reading about bias frames. And I want to talk a little bit about bias frames as well. I'm going to do all that on the computer while I show you uh, some of my results. I'm Kurt Zepatello and you're watching Ask Request 1. Okay, so if you're just starting out in astrophotography, you might find this very useful. If you've been doing it for a while, you still might find it useful. Anyways, what is this business of darks and what do they do? They remove thermal noise. And this thermal noise comes from a dark current that is produced from thermal activity, that is heat, in the image sensor. And it creates a glowing, a growing offset to all pixel values that increase with both time and higher temperatures. So that person that was mentioning, they don't need to do darks if dark frames if they cool it. Well, there is something to that, but it doesn't remove it altogether, at least not yet. And let me just show you on PixInsight here, I have an image that I took a while ago, and this was with no darks, no dark frames. And you can see all these little red, green, and blue spots on here. Those are actually what I'm talking about. That's thermal noise, and the dark frames will remove those things, as can be seen over here. Okay, let me show you something else now. All right, there is another item related to this thermal noise, and that is amp glow. And ZWO describes it this way. They say each sensor has at least one, often many, analog to digital conversion units as well as noise reduction units. And these support circuits can generate heat or emit a near infrared light, both of which can cause what's known as amp glow. Let me just show you what I mean. Here is a image, a recent image, where I took no flats or bias or no darks even, and it was at negative 20 degrees Celsius. That's what I cooled the camera off. And this is with my ASI 294. And notice this, this is what I'm talking about. This is that amp glow, it's right here. There's a little bit down here and there's some on the other side. Here is the same data, only I used darks on this, as well as flats and bias, but flats and bias won't fix this amp glow. What does fix this amp glow is darks, the dark frames. And look, it completely em eliminated this amp glow. So if your camera does have amp glow, it's not the end of the world. Just use darks and dark frames and it'll remove it. Okay, so let's go look at my cameras that I have currently. And I'll show you some of the darks and what they look like. So this is my ASI 1600 at 20 degrees, negative 20 degrees Celsius. This is a 30 second single frame looks like. Here it is at 90 seconds, and here it is at 180 seconds, and you notice the amp glow is starting to appear on this side and this this corner as also on this side over here. Now here is a stacked image with 20 darks, and this is my master dark. So you want to take at least 20 dark frames to make a master dark. More, more couldn't hurt, but usually only 20 or so should be enough. Okay, so that was my ASI 1600. Now let's take a look at my 294. You'll notice, this is 30 seconds, you'll notice you'll see a little bit of that 
amp glow right there. Here's 90 seconds. No, it's much more pronounced now. And here it is at 180 seconds. And it's much more pronounced. Now you notice these lineations that are going horizontal lineations. That is something that bias frames can fix. And I'll talk a little bit more about those bias frames at the end. Now here's some amp glow over here too. You can see it. Now I'm going to show you what the master dark looks like for this one. Now you can really see the that amp glow really well right now. Now let's take a look at my last camera, and that is the 2600. And already you can notice something with the 30 second image. You, you don't see any hints of amp glow. Here it is at 90 seconds. Again, nothing. And here it is at 180 seconds. No amp glow. And here is a master dark, uh, 60 second master dark. But again, there's no amp glow with this ASI 2600. And that's the beauty of this ASI 2600. No amp glow. So this camera, as well as the ASI 533, are advertises as not having any amp glow. I think the ASI 20 or 6200 is also advertised that way as well. So there you have it. Newer cameras are able to be produced without any amp glow. Does that mean you should still not use darks? Well, at this point, I'd say continue to use them because they might still have those that thermal noise interdispersed on the pixels on the sensor. So you might still want to use them. All right, now what about this uh, bias business? First off, let me tell you what bias frames do. It turns out every image sensor, whether it's a CCD or CMOS, whatever it is, has what's known as a fixed pattern noise. And a pattern is results from the manufacturing process. So it's not part of a thermal noise. It's, it's just part of the manufacturing of the sensor itself. And I turned up the, the juice on it, if you will. I turned up the exposure. And you see this horizontal lineation. This was with my 294. This horizontal business, the lines are, are going across. That's the pattern noise from the actual production of the sensor itself. What I've been reading is that if you take dark frames, bias frames aren't really necessary. And that makes some sense because if we come over here to look at this master dark, if you will, from my 20, 294, you'll see this lineation on here already with the dark frames. So there's no real need to uh, use a bias frame if you're using dark frames, or that's what I've been reading. Now I've always used dark frame or bias frames in all my images, but maybe I didn't really need to after all these years. So there you have it. That's what bias frames do. And in conclusion, dark frames should definitely be collected at this point for cameras that do have amp glow, such as the ASI 1600 and the ASI 294. Dark frames still should be collected at this point for cameras that don't have amp glow, but are not guaranteed to be devoid of hot pixels, such as ASI 533 and the ASI 2600. They're recommended for not having amp glow, but they're not guaranteed not to have little splotches in them uh, from thermal noise. So I would still use dark frames if I had those cameras, at least for now anyways. And contradictory information exists on whether or not bias frames are needed. I I went on a few reputable webs, websites and pe some people are saying, oh, you better use them. And then other sites are saying, no, you don't have to use them. But um, from what I understand, logically, if you're collecting dark frames, then bias frames really would not be necessary. However, or with a caveat, I should say, they would be useful for subtraction if you're collecting flat frames, if you are not collecting dark flat frames. So that is, if you collect flat frames, you can also collect what's known as dark flat frames, and I have a video on that. And these dark flats would do the same thing as regular darks would for your regular imaging. However, if you're not collecting dark flats, then you should be using bias frames because they'll, they'll do almost the same thing as the dark flats. Okay, well, I hope I didn't confuse you too much, and I hope you found this uh, useful. So I think that's all for now, folks, and we'll see you next time.